Hello and welcome, this will be another video from my VCV Rack Hacks series. Today I will be talking about what I call the aliasing trick. Now before we begin, I really want to show you something, something really bizarre, something that doesn't make any sense. You see this filter over here? I will move this big knob, the cutoff frequency, and I know that most of us will expect to hear some kind of a filter sweep. Well, listen carefully. Now, what is even more bizarre is over here I have a reverb. Now, the wet level is at zero, and when you, when normally when you increase wet level, you expect to hear more of the reverb. Well, once again, this is not what's going to happen here. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't make sense, uh, stick around and uh, you'll see it's actually very simple um, and yet uh, powerful. Uh, it's a powerful technique uh, you can use on, on many different uh, modules. So um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so what is the aliasing trick? Um, I'm starting from a very simple patch, uh, just a VCO. And here's what we are going to do. I'm going to have another VCO that I will want to use as an LFO. However, I will not move this knob. I will keep it on this default frequency. And in order to convert it to LFO, you need to put a sample and hold. Remember, this random is just a sample and hold in VCV rack. Um, so let's resample that. Right now we have two uh, hertz rate. However, in order for the aliasing trick to work, we need to set this frequency to exactly 261.63 and then move this fine tuning knob. So we, are, we converted this VCO, the simple VCO into LFO. And, and I, I agree, <laughs> right? At this point, it doesn't make any sense because we could just use LFO, but, but uh, stay with me and you'll see that this is actually, this little combo has uh, incredibly exciting implications. Now, why this works? Let's have a look. Here is my original signal. And here is my resampled signal. This is alias of this blue waveform. It's the same aliasing that everyone hates so much. You know that uh, you probably have heard many times when people talk about, uh, you know, an anti-aliasing filters and and non-aliasing oscillators and all that. It's always bad, right? With with aliasing. Well, not always. Sometimes we can use it. Uh, in some very uh, interesting ways. Um, and the rules are simple. The, the reason it works is that there is a small difference between the original frequency and the uh, uh, resampling um, sample and hold. And by the way, right now, if this random was precise, this frequency should stay uh, the same, but it's there, there are little imprecisions. So anyway, the rules are simple. Notice that here we have why why this number, right? It's default number of most of oscillators is 261.63, that's uh, middle C. Um, and by setting it to slightly different frequency, let's say 13, now I have um, half hertz frequency. The difference between them will determine frequency of this new um, LFO in this case, right? So if I set different, let's say, right? I can control speed. I can exactly predict what this frequency will be. Uh, and that's why I said, you know, 261.63, because then you can control that speed with fine tuning. Right? So 
It's very simple, uh, but um, notice that immediately, even with this simple oscillators, we can explore some interesting LFO shapes. So, this is not how normal LFO would behave. There's this little glide because we have analog uh, VCO over here. And notice also this, this, this little wiggle here, you know what that is? That's exactly the, alien, the effect of anti-aliasing. Basically, the, this, this, this VCO is designed to avoid aliasing and that's why you have those those wiggle wiggles here. So the irony is that we are now using uh, aliasing trick uh, to actually take advantage of something that normally is hidden. We don't have LFOs that behave like that. Now what's even more exciting is that be between that VCO and our resampling module, we can put audio rate um, processing. So let's say uh, you know simple filter with resonance. Right? So uh, that's a possibility. Uh, obviously, you know, as I mentioned before, reverb. And this is crazy, right? Reverbs are not... Uh, you can't use reverbs on um, slow signals. Nothing interesting will happen. We have some kind of randomization here. Uh, so think about all the possibilities, all uh, uh, modules that normally work only on audio rate signals. Now you can take them and see how they look under microscope in different temporal domain. Um, and just to give you a few ex other examples, let's say we have this um, oscillator here, this one, and we are going to plug it here. Notice that you know this one is just like most oscillator has this default frequency, uh, it doesn't even show, but it's 261.63. And now, again, fine-tuning. And now we can use some interesting properties. You know, this was designed to be a, a, an audio rate oscillator, but now, you know, we can do whatever we want. Let's say we can have additive LFO. We can also use some of those, um, you know, interesting effects. Not to mention all the hospas, you know, wavetables, right? So it's it's a wavetable uh, oscillator, uh, or maybe decimated. And if you, by the way, if you set it to fifty percent, notice what happens. <laughs> we have an eight-step sequencer out of this this oscillator. Right? I mean, it's, it's you know, in, in many way, in many of these situations, it, it's, it looks a little bit weird and kind of, uh, kind of funny or quirky. Uh, but in uh, the rest of this uh, video, I will show you a few examples where, where I think uh, using this, this uh, aliasing trick it actually gives some very interesting results. Alright, so here I have a practical example. Uh, I'm using Shapemaster as my sequencer. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with Shapemaster, I, I made a lot of tutorials about it, and one of them is dedicated to um, sequencing. Now, <laughs> here's here's a funny thing. Uh, recently, I had a uh, chat uh, with Pierre from Geodesics, and we were wondering if it's possible to have more than one playhead in Shapemaster. Now, obviously we could copy that shape to eight channels and play at different speeds, right? But um, it would be so much nicer if we could just edit one shape, randomize it, you know, do phasing and all that kind of warping, and yet have multiple playheads that send those sequences to different synthesizers or different voices. And you know what? Uh, then I realized that the aliasing trick actually does the trick here. Not only we can have two playheads, we can have unlimited number of playheads and each of them can play at different speeds. So the way we do that is, just like before, we need to resample 
that sequence. And um, we need to set this, uh, the entire cycle to some arbitrary speed. So over here I have length in hertz. So let's do 200. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. 200. Notice that now sequence just stops. And all I need to do is, let's say we are going to set it to um, 199.75. So now I'm playing this entire sequence, and here's the best part. I can have another resampler, so now I have, you know, <laughs> I have two playheads, essentially. Uh, if I want to play it at it's a slightly different speed, I can just adjust this, right, one is slower, let's even... The right one is much slower. Um, and hey, do you want to play one of them backward? No problem. <laughs> and uh, I hope, I mean, maybe I should just, just spell it out, the, the consequences of that. Imagine, you know, hundreds of these, uh, if you want, obviously it's, it's kind of crazy, but you can have unlimited playheads, unlimited uh, speeds, forward, backward, and you can edit this in real time. Right, you can... <laughs> um, Alright, so th this, is, this is one example. Let's uh, see uh, uh, some other examples here. Here I have a simple patch. Everything starts from this VCO that runs at default speed, then it goes through reverb, tal chorus. So think about, you know, we can use all VST plugins. Then it goes through delay, and then it gets resampled at slightly different speed. Instead of 0.63, it's 61. And that's uh, pretty much um, that's pretty much it. Then it drives my um, melodic layer as well as filters. That's why I can hear it on left and right side. So each of these filters has its own chaotic LFO. And here's another example. Uh, I have piano tech here uh, being played by this patch. And uh, the whole thing is driven by this audio rate oscillator. See this shape? So now obviously I have plenty of opportunities to, to destroy this or maybe gradually evolve. All right, this example is, is really spooky, I have to admit it, but just, just listen to this for a second. So what is going on here is I have a simple sequencer here running at audio rate. Uh, it's already uh, quantized, but then it goes through my VST plugin called Soothe. It's a plugin that is supposed to uh, remove certain unpleasant frequencies uh, in a smart way. So it's one of those new AI kind of plugins. and. Notice what happens if I remove the effect of it. I don't have a four resamplers here. And 
And finally, here is a, a variant of the previous patch, uh, slightly less spooky, uh, also using Sooth to create those glides. Something relaxing to end this video. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'm really curious if you guys can uh, think of some awesome audio write um, modules that could be used in this context. Uh, I still feel I, I, I haven't explored it enough. Thanks for watching.